half of the film is shot underground in the in the actual construction, and the other half is shot in a studio. Okay. Um, the things that were too dangerous were shot in the studio, or or too complicated. Uh, but at a, one of the first times that I I went underground, I had the same experience as I tried to show in the film. You you go into the work site and you go into this cathedral and into the tunnels, and uh, and then further into to the this machine, this train or this submarine, and then into the pressure chamber, and then into the cutterhead, and then these more specul speculative uh, spaces. And that was the that was the that was the narrative starting point of the film. So you can't really write that. It's because it's a physical experience. Yeah. You can you can write the rooms become smaller and smaller, but you can't really. Uh, it doesn't translate well into text. Mm -hmm. But that was the backbone of the whole project. So we actually started making a video <laughs> example of the spa physical spaces. And, um, and the film is financed by the by the Danish Film Institute, and they gave us the financing for the film before they had a script based on this video. The part of our discussion was that um, that the monster in the film is in the sound. So the uh, in some ways it makes a lot of sense that when you when you're working with sound, you have this uh, concept of of. Um, it's called the home clack in Danish, it's like space uh, resonance. There must be a better English word for that. Um, what's it? Reverb, it's called. And, and in Danish, it's, it means uh, the, the, sound of the, the sound of the room. And so the size of the room is also very much related to how the echo is in a, in a room. And, a, and that's a thing we really uh, worked a lot with. Also because we had so, not only did we have, it's a first feature and it's a limited budget, but we also had very little time because we had to go into the construction when they were not working and then go out again before they were working. So we sort of, sometimes it felt like this, um, you know, going into the gears of a big machine. Um, so, so, so we knew from the beginning that sound would be a driving factor all the way, and then then I got a cooperation with a with a Danish composer called Sus Gunnar Ruba, who's an electronic musician, and she did this really brutal. Um, she doesn't call it music; she calls it sound textures, um, and uh, and that that really for me that that took it to the next level. And she she yeah she she put it put it out as a soundtrack recently also and she won a couple of awards for it also so she, I think she did a really a really brutal and great job well it's a it's a combination of a lot of things because it's a, uh, the, the footage that you see in the film is both from the research and from from uh, these video tests that I talked about before the film was financed and written um, and it's also from from more uh, usual uh, sh shooting days so I'm not sure actually. I we, officially I think we had eight days on the ground, um, but I think in, in reality it's more like fourteen. Or, I was down there a lot, just uh, hanging out. Thanks. And my last question um, on on the really on those narrow shots uh, where it's really tight. Um, did you use smaller cameras or really large ones? I mean. <coughs> I, I suppose you didn't have enough space there, so did you? Well, what type of gear do you use? I mean, not specific as small, but oh, yeah. smaller, but or yes, we 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 did a lot of um, we used a lot of different cameras. I think we have, if you count everything, we have nine different cameras, uh, ranging from this really big Alexa, really expensive cameras, and then down to uh, uh, something from a phone, from my phone, the the shot going down into the. And then, but the really tight shot is a combination of Blackmagic Micro, which is a kind of a small camera, and then the GoPro. Camera. It was like a small compressed version of Europe, be behind the walls, with with people from all over Europe working there. And so it was sort of its its own world within Copenhagen, and that was my starting point. And what prompted you to really go down there? Like, if you say most people haven't done it, what made you, or how did you get the chance to really see it? 
Yeah, well, we we uh, were lucky enough to to have a very open um, uh, organization in the metro construction companies. That's it's Italian companies, um, and they they I, I don't know maybe they were bored after eight years of uh, digging tunnels, and then they they invited us to come and, and play around. And uh, yeah, I think they were pretty brave because I was I was very uh, clear about that I wanted to make something that was a uh, an accident and and uh, maybe another pleasant experience. And uh, but they were they they had a very open mind I think for a, for a, a billion dollar organization they they had a very open mind. True, it doesn't look very flattering for them like what's happening there. <laughs> well, it's it's yeah. like it's um, it's my thing. And it's uh, and they gave us space to do it, um, and they don't have to necessarily. It's not a commercial, uh, no. and uh, and nothing like this happened in Copenhagen. So I guess they, they now they finished do, doing this and, and it will open in the summer. So uh, I guess they they kind of made it without without a big accident. <laughs>